as well. What was the internet used for back then, anyway? I mean, obviously, I was fairly, like, fairly young. Um, uh, the internet was originally actually created by the military to uh, keep an eye on the Russians. That sounds ridiculous, so it's got a good chance of being true. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I've been told just through studies, so uh, it's probably wrong. This is also 7 in yep. the morning brain, so what do I know? Yep, and here we are now anyway with uh, Alpha Smith Force Nick against Elodia, Narcolepsy, and Kalish. So then, Kalish? Kalish? you want to throw your bets because I do see Elodia and I know he's a very good player, but we have seen um, Nick, Alpha, and Smith Force do some very good matches, but I don't know Kalish or Narcolepsy, so it could get a little bit crazy if we're uh, not careful. It could be a very, very interesting game as it shapes up. I mean, Aluria, obviously, more or less anyone that plays this game knows Aluria. Very, very strong 1v1 player. Very skilled with mechanics. Um, Planetary Annihilation Gods have not had too good a history in Clan Wars previously. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's just you know? because... So that may be the chink in the armor. Well, that might just be because they're, you know, they're more... Well, they're a legitimate 1v1 group only, so, I mean... Of course, you know, if you're a 1v1 specialist, then trying to go into a more team-based style would be obviously a very hard transition. But at the same time, that is the same sort of deal where maybe Narcolepsy and uh, Kalich just kind of feed the economy to Elodie and they're like, all right, have fun. And then he just goes around well, with bomber snipes and, you know, cheesy things. I mean, looking at Team Burn on the whole is generally more of a team orientated clan mm -hmm. so despite the fact we are seeing you know arguably the strongest 1v1 player in the in this match it is in a team environment and he is against a you know a group that do practice this quite a bit so it could work out to be very very interesting narcolepsy and um Kalish, Kalish, just as well to say they do you know they are both very good players in their own right but how they're all going to work together as a team it's anyone's guess Prelier just so excited to let me know that we're now at a glorious eight minute delay, so I have no idea how the hell we're reading, reaching that point, but you know what? Meh. <laughs> Whatever. Well, I would start streaming, you know, just to fix that, but at the same time, I, w I wouldn't want to take away these glorious views, you know. You can expand your YouTube channel and your following, it'll be great. <laughs> well, they have to hit follow, so if they do, that'd be fantastic, <laughs> you know. Just subtle, just yes. check the follows, check out Twitter, I've got everything below, you know, it's just all the all the important please, stuff. Please below. follow Ghost so that I don't have to do anything ever again, and I can just turn up here and talk. That would be great. Yeah, so then so then you, I have a reason to wake up at, well actually I have a reason not to go to bed and then just stay up for, uh, well, in effectively an hour I would have pulled a, an entire 24 hours, so... Most likely, I will be pulling at least a 26-hour day today, or yesterday and today. So, you know. And are you going to cast for those 26 hours? So are you going to open up some replays after this, maybe? <laughs> Honestly, I might have to sit down and just start editing all the videos so I can throw up. Instead of having just an entire, like, uh, six-hour tournament video, I have, like, <laughs> every single individual match, match. which is something yeah. that I usually do. So I would probably advise you to take out all of the things we said in between that. <laughs> oh <laughs> my goodness! Of course. Any subscribers left? Of course. Anyway, um, moving on to the actual match. So we see, you know, the white team Pagalodi and Alcolepsi play Kelsh. They are opening pretty standard. Uh, this power storage is surprising. It makes a lot of sense because they will benefit from it. But it is also an unusual move in that you don't tend to see people do it so much. Whereas yellow opening up very standard. Um, vehicle factories, bot factories first air factory coming out so oh and a scout a skidder actually this is this is unusual to see in a team game people seem to sort of get caught up in the excitement and only send combat units mm -hmm. you he's don't gonna go to through the thunderdome yeah buddy so you will be going through the oh, thunderdome oh. now um these players now the real oh. question is uh we do know that team burning has played on this map i mean it's probably a guaranteed at this point they have they are they are in the losers bracket so i would assume they've had they have some experience on this map um they also probably do know just be as how the game's been playing out that you know the thunderdome has you know not the best but we do see a counter yeah. scout here from uh yellow and this bought the t2 straight away oh notice how yeah elodia narcolepsy and kelsh have elected to go with three commanders on this t2 Holy factory cow. they want maximum this thing out. power now this is what I've been waiting to see. I know that I mentioned I was waiting to see um, T2 being rushed mm -hmm. before, 
and this is exactly how I wanted it done with the power of three commanders. It is very efficient, it's very quick, that even adding Fabas in there, that T2 is going to go up lightning speed and this is going to be a fantastic game to watch. Yellow now responding with their own T2, but they're not really going to commit as hard to it as um, as the white team has, right. because it's, it's already too late, their commanders are spread out. White was obviously planning this from the start. This is going to be very crucial. Just, I mean, obviously, just having tier two out at what three minutes. Um, well, we're about to hit, yeah, three minutes and fifty-five seconds. That uh, tier two bot touches the ground, and uh, they're going to start that economy. And honestly, if I think the best way that yellows can be able to react to this is maybe just try and rush them out before they have any way. I think what yellow, or excuse me, what white's going to have to do is until they can get that sustainable tier two economy up, they're going to have to really hard turtle. But at the same time, uh, what Yellow is going to have to do is obviously try and break that turtle shell because if they're allowed the opportunity to just build and build this tier 2 army without any real resistance, they're going to get immediately overrun. And already we do see some, uh, a couple tanks here out of uh, Yellow trying to get some pressure out. They're going to, oh, immediately murder that dog and um, trying to get some damage done before it's too late. You say though we've already kind of reached the point. I'm going to make a bit of a um, bit of a controversial prediction, but I think that Yellow has already missed the boat in this game. I mean, they're going up against again Elodia, Narcolepsy, Kelsh. They've obviously, you know, they planned this at the very least, and it is going to be extremely difficult. I mean, look at look at the positioning of the units for Yellow and what they actually have available to them. They didn't mm -hmm. didn't expect this. They weren't prepared for it. They are bringing out Pelicans. Presumably to go for perhaps an inferno drop, try and inflict some heavy, heavy damage before uh, White can do anything about it. But they're already out of position. I mean, the T2 units are already rolling off the belt. The eco is going up. It's how do they get there quickly enough to do anything about this? I think their only option at this point might be to try and one up their cheese game and go for orbital. Yeah, it comes. Hmm? Ah, here we go. So yeah, uh, the anti are going to try and protect this. A lot of anti air actually out of. Uh, out of uh, yellow, if you see just by these um, these pelicans, they they might have had the same thing done to them. So, if this can get something done now, there is nothing protecting this back door. They're gonna drop immediately, and oh, one drops, two. They all drop. So if these flame tanks can get this done, but there are there is a slammer and a commander out here. It's they're going the oh. wrong way. This tier th this yep. triple barrel turret. It's they're not gonna get anything. They might get this energy, but they're not even gonna get the energy. Nothing done there with the drop. I would say the problem with that drop was that they went for six Infernos, which would have been a completely appropriate number in a 1v1 situation, mm -hmm. but with three commanders available to defend. I mean, imagine that those three commanders had have sort of known it was coming, positioned themselves to prevent it. Right. What would it have really accomplished? Triple barrel laser turret to sight. What would it have accomplished against just the commanders alone? You know? Mm -hmm. It's definitely, definitely they should have added a lot more flame tanks in that, and that was obviously just kind of the, well, no, duh. Um, yeah. But... Well, I think Yellow's only option at this point is legitimately to either go something so cheesy that it ones up, it one ups the part, the uh, provolone that Elodia is dishing out, or try maybe and do a long haul fight. But um, really, I don't know if that's going to work. And as we can see, the orbital of uh, White is now coming out. So. Honestly, I mean, they're just all over this. It looks like White really knows they have the strategy down for this this planet. Yeah, and here comes the orbital as well. I mean, with access to not only do bots, tier 2 eco, but the orbital layer on top, Yellow is even more on the back foot now. You know, they've completed their T2, they're building up their eco, they're trying their best to respond, trying their best to stay in the game, not get overwhelmed. But now White is throwing in yet again another, you know, this other curveball. Once they take the orbital layer, yellow has to respond again to what they do. And how long will it be really before we see, you know, the big army of slammers, the mm -hmm. nuke potentially? You know, how long will it be before we see yet another trick from white that yellow can't keep up with? Maybe hashtag double nuke strats. <laughs> um, all right, so some air units flying around now, uh, trying to just kind of pick off the uh, army of yellow. I mean, it looks like at this point, really, yellow's just being not even tossed around they're just getting ripped apart i mean positionally they're out of position there's no anti-air here to protect from all these uh bombers 
they're they do see that the orbital is coming up so they are trying to get that but a commander actually having to push out here this sand crab trying to get some damage and maybe just force uh force some form of push but really isn't even going to be able to do anything. We do have some slammers here coming out for white. We have uh, some, I think it's just slammers. It looks like it's just completely slammers. And uh, flak even being built up here. So white very prepared for this. There is a commander, but really will it do anything? And honestly, red, obviously I hear you're busy, but um, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. He does have this kind of secured. Um, but the next best thing that white can do is basically just get some pelters, get some sniper bots, get some just effectively longer range units and there'll be nothing he can do now yellow does have sniper bots of his own he is backing them up to make sure that the uh... the kind of quick scoops of uh... yellow can easily do this but here comes the pelters the pelters are going to be easily able to overwhelm this and force yellow back just because of the damage they'll be able to put out now um, no i agree with you um, the you know as as it stands and also just like comment on something very surprising mm -hmm. uh... yellow actually managed to complete orbital before white did which just goes to show how much White's investing in other fronts. But having said that, you know, Yellow has made the fatal mistake. They went for the Thunderdome. They built Eco down here. This Thunderdome! <laughs> it works. No, but in all seriousness, in all seriousness, that commander push was very, very ballsy, very manly move. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's I think it's kind of paid off. You know, they managed to like push in unexpectedly, destroy this Eco. Uh, it paid off, but at what cost? I mean, we did see the commander push out. Yeah. He is building walls actually on the other side, mind you, so even if there's a push, this commander's on the wrong side of the walls. But um, a huge air army now out for white, and there really isn't anything that yellow can really do to stop this. There's even no anti-air here to protect this commander, and he's gonna pay the price just for being on the wrong side of those walls, and as he falls... Oh! The miscalculations, though. Somebody forgot to to punch some numbers here um i well they're gonna get them on this swipe but still um air units now or the orbital units now coming up for um yellow first casualty first casualty and i think it's gonna be the first uh, drop of blood on yellow side that begins that the trickle turns into a pour and yellow is gonna start bleeding out now that's very morbid but also very true <laughs> <laughs> i mean we've re we've kind of reached this point you know we have the tier 2 factory already up, already completed. We have a second T2 factory being built up this time. Vehicles, you know, potentially some uh, some shallows coming out. They might even build some levelers just to be trolls, who knows? <laughs> I do want to see the levelers. levelers ever. Yeah. Maybe double it's, nukes? It's very likely to happen. Given that this is Elodia, there is a very good chance. You know how they dropped the Infernos at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. Knowing Elodia, I think there is a good chance that he will actually scout over, see if he can drop some levelers. Just because it's what he does. Uh, not level us, sorry. Vanguards. Vanguard Drop drops. Vanguards. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That would be... There's Inferno drops, and then there's the Vanguard drops. That's... There's <laughs> scary, and then there's literally the Grim Reaper incarnate. That is what... That is what commanders tuck commanders in at night to say, you know, make sure the Vanguards don't drop you. That's, that's what they say when, you know, you're really scared. Oh yeah, if even one touches down on the ground... I think it has a pretty good chance of finishing off a wounded commander. Perhaps yeah, at like you know, probably. 75, 50 percent. Uh, no a commander or like 90 percent of the base. Their armor is incredible. Their damage is basically the same thing. And uh, this bombing run basically opening the front door or opening the back door per se uh, for those vanguard drops. And so, as we say it, you know, looking at the strategy. Team. Sorry. Oh, yep. T two. Looking like looking at the strategy that the sort of both coming out with minute yellows lost the commander they've been on the back foot for, since the start of the game this pushes them back even more so they know that you know attempting to push into that enemy base is probably a suicide mission right now so they seem to be building up their forces turtling up you know potentially to it seems try and cheese a little bit with this orbital make some gains they got to the orbital there faster than their opponents did somehow mm. and now they're trying to capitalize on it by building these anchors you know making it very difficult for the white team to actually make any more gains than they already have. Right. The problem though is that the white team's gains are already so significant that this is really more of a stall tactic than anything else. If they're relying on it, they will lose. But if they're using it as a stall to go for something else, then that could be very interesting. Well, right now, uh, we do have a bit of a push out here for yellow, actually on a dual front, so they're going to try and maybe get something here. Maybe even this commander, he is a little exposed, but there is that very strong wall there to protect him. Um, these anchors are in a very 
interesting position. They're right above the Thunderdome, but I almost want to see them in maybe one or two over the base. I mean, obviously there's an umbrella, but that would that would obviously be a great way to ward off any air units that might try and come over and uh, pick off maybe another commander or some more uh, factories or uh, anti-air units. So interesting choice to. It is a little bit switch. Uh, interesting I mean, choice. Despite the fact that yellow, sorry, go. No, no, go, no, <laughs> you, go no, ahead. No, no, no. Go. You, no, 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 no. <laughs> you open the door. Anyway, <laughs> so you know, back to back to the plot. Um, <laughs> despite the fact that both yellow and <laughs> despite the fact that both yellow and white have this orbital, neither of them is actually built an orbital radar. Why do you think that could be? Because they don't care. <laughs> um, it might just be because they uh, they don't really need to. I mean, obviously both players or both teams know there is orbital. Um, I think it's safe to say both sides know uh, that they can see the other's units. So, interestingly enough, uh, no, the deep space radar just kind of takes care of it. So, <laughs> it is true. It's just what you mentioned before kind of got me thinking. You said I'm not sure why you know, yellow, or I would like to see yellow sort of pushing up a bit and maybe getting some anchors over the base, kind of hemming them in, pushing them back. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't do that from where we're sitting. Right, except for the fact right. that maybe they're, they're worried about, um, you know, umbrellas on the ground. That is true. They because they don't have vision. Yeah, they haven't been able to really get in and look at the base. I mean, obviously, in our site, we see just nothing but vehicles in air, and that's, you know, obviously very strong. Um, but this yeah. this anchor creep, it is slowly working its way towards the uh, the base of white, and white still hasn't really reacted to it. They don't seem to really, maybe not even care. Uh, it just seems to be this very relaxed, like, yeah, they're, they're pushing, yeah, but we've got plans. But really, are there plans going to be able to do anything? Um, white is or white, excuse me, uh, yellow is actually in the Thunderdome. They are slowly working on a lot of the stuff. Um, the Hulkins, though, being able to kind of murder anything in the Thunderdome. But besides the air, if uh, yellow turtles hard enough with plenty of anti-air, which uh, they have some flak, but I think they just need to go yep. really ridiculous with the flak. Um, and that would be, the, I think, the safest way to just kind of ignore any of these units, which, I mean, as we just saw, they flew in, they lost almost half their units, and... They might get another tier two factory, which or tier two uh, metal extractor, excuse me, which they do. But again, they lost all of their air units. Again, you know they can obviously throw it, throw them at them kind of mercilessly. But in all actuality, looking at the map control, they are losing map control. They've lost almost all of their control over the uh, the Thunderdome, though the Hulkins is obviously safely controlling it. But looking at the push, I almost want to say that yellow's in the uh, the driver's seat. They do have an SSX up, and in terms of reaction, white now just finally being able to push back. I'm actually forced to agree. I mean, I think we can look at the game so far and say white delivered a very strong, you know, very strong punch to the nose of yellow early in the game. Gave them a little bit of a bloody one, you know, blew up a commander, uh, made a lot of gains, rushed the T2 made it very very difficult for them but it almost feels as if like you say they're just playing this sort of very relaxed game almost lazy in a way mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. rather than making you know making the decisive moves they've just kind of been sitting back thinking oh what should we do next well maybe we'll do well, yellow has been you know on the back foot clawing into the ground and desperately doing everything they can to gain control so and it's really paying off i mean like you say yellow now making kind of big gains pushing back gaining more map control than they ever had and there's no reason it should have happened yeah. Oh, here comes this first anchor though. That may take out the SSX. Oh, the SSX. Is the SSX going to fall prey? Oh, careful, little buddy. Okay. Ooh, the SSX backs up. Now, the problem is that does tell them that there's an SSX. And also, we do see an umbrella. Interestingly enough, be not being able to shoot at the uh, at the uh, anchor. So maybe the, uh, the size of this planet just a little bit too small. But um, a bit of a push here coming out for white. Uh, these sniper bots able to easily clean up all this. The anti-air not able to really do as much as it used to be able to. But at the same time, what is going to be uh, Yellow's response to these sniper bots? They need to find a way to quickly uh, clean them up. But, you know, will they? Oh, well, they got a giant laser too. So um, there's the answer, I guess. <laughs> Forgetting about that SSX. This is the thing as well, is despite the fact that, you know, White has built up umbrellas on one side of the base, they haven't on the other. Now, Yellow doesn't actually know this because, again, 
For some reason, I just completely cannot understand why neither team has decided, you know what, we'll build an orbital radar. You know, this thing's pretty cheap, let's just get it up there. Um, like a tier 1 or tier 2, because I know White did have one a little bit, um, watching over that, that kind just, of crevice. Just the tier 1. Yeah, they, they, uh, White did have one for a little bit, but it was uh, picked off by uh, Yellow's Avengers, so it's not there oh, anymore. Good, but good this play. SSX going to that. work here. The umbrella, it needs to see this umbrella and it needs to back off because, oh, this is going to be an interesting fight. This SSX needs to stay alive if they want to have a chance at living in this game. Umbrella is going to focus down the Avengers, so this SSX needs to get out of dodge, and they are safe for now. For now. Yeah, we've we've really reached the point, I think, window of opportunity to use this SSX to best effect has just closed. I mean... White has now built up umbrellas in the key locations, oh. like you said before, the planet's very small, and it goes down. Oh. So that's the end of that for now. Will there be and another? what really is Yellow's game plan? At the minute, they just seem to be pumping out sniper bots as fast as they can, and maybe they're just thinking they can overwhelm White's land army mm -hmm. if they mass up enough. It's definitely, you know, it's not as much of a gamble as it seems. If they could mass up a significant number, then yeah, yeah why not? I was going to say, that's what I was thinking. If they can mass it up, have enough anti-air to kind of protect it, because looking at the, the air units of uh, white, it's only anti-air. So while the thing is, there's there's two things. Oh my goodness, the pings. Very, very either agitated pings or maybe even um, kind of concerned pings, because, well, really, I think the the cheese that they were really hoping to kind of pay them off, it's kind of it hasn't backfired as much as it's stalled out. And I think the problem is they're like, well, what do we do now? Because usually, you know, the players that are good usually don't last this long just because they don't expect so much pro uh, provolone on the base or on the field, excuse me. Yeah, it's it's exactly like we talked about before. You know, I, I would hesitate to call the cheese to rush out the T2 as fast as they did. I think it was it was strategy. It was very mm -hmm. well used sort of three commander, uh, two faba, build up that T2, ASAP, get the eco, get the advantage. The problem was, and it's very, very strange to say, but the problem was they did not push that advantage as much as they could have. They took A commander and then they kind of settled in and got comfortable. Whereas, like we said, you know, Yellow took that punch to the face and then immediately, rather than sort of break and crumble and lose the morale, they hunkered down and they did mm -hmm. everything to claw their way back into the game. They maybe shouldn't have been able to do that, given the advantage that White had, but mm -hmm. White gave them the window of opportunity and they pounced on it, they seized it, they took it, and now White's really paying for it. I mean, this game has gone on for 20 minutes and it could have been over. It most likely right. could have been over with the way it shaped up in the first five. But it's turning out to be extremely interesting. I mean, look at the orbital layer, look at the land units, look at the production, the eco. Not, again, you know, white kind of in the lead, but not really able to capitalize on it. Um, agreed. Sorry, I was, I was just kind of going through chat, and uh, Elite was actually coming in here and praising us, and I was like, oh, thanks. Make it earlier, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the things. <laughs> now, all right, so um, as you said, they were... They have, uh, it wasn't cheese, but all the important things, but, um, interestingly enough, I think the only thing that is legitimately holding back yellow at this point is this Hulkins. It's almost dead, but once that dies, that is the only ground form of long-range artillery that is really stopping yellow from really pushing in here. The orbital game is starting to fall, uh, fall apart here for yellow, but these anchors are just so tanky, pushing back all of these Avengers. I seriously think if the Avenger or the uh, Hulkins falls, there is nothing else that is stopping Yellow from being able to push this game. Definitely. I mean, the orbital game has turned into a stalemate, as is the way that it usually goes. Once both players have a significant force, have significant anchors, you just kind of get these really ineffective pushes and no real gains are made because, mm -hmm. like you say, the anchors are so tanky. And I mean, what would you even do with it if you took it? Umbrellas are quite cheap. They go up very quick. And once you're aware of the orbital, once you've got the proper response in place, it, it doesn't really have a whole lot of use anymore. Mm -hmm. But Yellow's still building up these sniper bots going for what we talked about before. I think maybe just trying to mass them out, mass producing them with the commanders. Mm -hmm. And if they start to push with those Hulkins or not, you know, a lot will go down very quickly. Now, but interesting yeah, little uh, transition here though. Uh, White, yeah, going for shellers now instead of boom bots now, or uh, sniper bots. Now, if I remember correctly, shellers have a slightly larger range than sniper bots, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think they have a larger range than a Pelda. Actually, looking at the map, 
it might be the curvature of it, but they definitely seem to be shooting at least as far as the pelda. Mm -hmm. And white, not white, sorry, yellow really needs to be doing something about this. Ooh. But, oh, here comes the unit cannon. I was going to say, and if you look at white's vision, they did see it. That air, that air fighter was just alive long enough to see it, so they do know it, but I don't think they spotted it. That's the thing. A lot of air units, though, coming out of here for uh, white. They and really want to clean box. this up. The shellers have just been absolutely obliterated by these, mm. um, you know, just docks in the front, scout out, scout out a little bit, get the range. As soon as the sniper bots have them in sight, they go out. Mm -hmm. Now, this could be a problem, though. What, uh, yellow, just, God, these colors, goodness. Um, yellow is losing their air or their uh, orbital layer, and these Avengers, while they are dying kind of repeatedly and just kind of getting thrown on them like docks, they are slowly breaking this. Originally, they had what I would almost want to say you know, a little bit more of White's base. They've been effectively pushed back to the Thunderdome, and I want to say, if they lose these anchors, that could be really detrimental, because then that allows White to do the exact same thing that uh, Yellow is doing to them, and if they're allowed that, the pressure is going to absolutely flip, and I don't think that Yellow will be able to kind of return that fight if it uh, does go that way. Yeah, I mean, having said that, though, we, we did talk about a little bit before, you you do say that the pressure will will flip and yellow is going to have a hard time but let's assume that white completely wins the orbital layer mm -hmm. what exactly do you think the effects would be on the game from that point forward given that you know the umbrellas are so prevalent and not really that cheap uh, not really that expensive very quick to build what kind of gains could white make um, in terms of gains, I think that would give them a lot of uh, vision control because all they would need to do is put a tier one uh, radar there, like you know, on the right, on the north and south, and they basically have almost complete vision control over uh, white's or of uh, yellow's base. And while that might not be a lot, you know, we've seen it quite a few times here where just simple vision can change the entire premise of the game. Oh, here comes your favorite, actually. Yellow pushing through the Thunderdome. Not entirely sure why, but they're doing it. And they're obliterated. GG The sniper dome. bots going hard, shooting through the walls, murdering everything. Two men and a, one man leaves. <laughs> Two men and a. No, four bots enter, one pelter fires. No more bots. <laughs> the wreckage is real. Everything has been <laughs> destroyed. But speaking of vision, I mean, you know, White is now building up. Um, have they built it up or do they actually have it available? I can't quite tell from here. No, they're building an advanced radar satellite again. Uh, second one of the game, I think. Was it an Orchid the first time? I believe it was an Orchid, yes. Ah, well, they're building up an advanced now, which is probably going to give them vision of almost half of the entire world by itself, if not mm -hmm. more. And I'm surprised because you were just talking about vision, you know, in terms of the vision gains, and from sort of six, seven minutes into the game, I've been saying, like, where's the radar? Where's the orbital radar? This right, would be right. This, right. this would be huge, you know, I, it's like, I'm surprised to see people doing it, see the players doing it now, so far into the game. Almost as if it was, you know, they're just kind of like, oh yeah, Radar, we plan to do that all along, mm -hmm. 26 minutes later. <laughs> right, right. Um, but, the thing is, they, they have almost completely cleared out the orbital. But in this time, I mean, I was, I was thinking about it, because they've invested a lot of Avengers into killing off these anchors, but... What has Yellow really been able to do at this point besides maybe push a little bit? They've got some docks pushing, they're going to kill a fab uh, tier 2 fabricator here and there. But, you know, Yellow has definitely been throwing away a lot of Avengers to try and kill it off. They're even going for a nuke at this point. What is Yellow doing besides this unicannon, but is it going to do anything? Because, you know, yeah, they're going to fire a unicannon, but there's just so many umbrellas that are so prevalent everywhere that I yeah, think they might get the shot down. Speaking of it, they're actually ready. Mm -hmm. Now, this has been changed a bit, you know, now the unit cannon does actually spread the units out in sort of a random pattern, but there is a lot of umbrella coverage. Yeah. Actually, wait, no. Yeah. Yep, there it is. One. So, actually, some slammers do touch down. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't really accomplish much. Yeah, that <laughs> Not was... Not even taking out that single umbrella. That's Oof. that's quite sad, really. That's got to be demoralizing for Yellow to see that happen, which, you know, this is something they invested quite a lot in, both mm -hmm. time and resources, to fire it off and have this happen. But, at the same time, you know, they, they must have always suspected or known this would happen. They took control of the orbital layer. They did really, really well. White was forced to respond with umbrellas, so they knew these things existed. Oh, both sides going for a nuke. Will we see, a, uh, you know, you know the, the stereotypical, like, both boxers nail each other in the face at the exact same time and both fall to the point where neither gets up? 
Yellow, whites is obviously much... That, I think yellow would be in the, the stronger position. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, yellows... Actually, no, they're... they're white. Uh, excuse me, yellows is building much quicker than uh, whites, so... Uh, this is going to be interesting, because both will fire, I almost want to say, at the exact same time. Maybe one a little bit earlier than the other, but still, both will most likely get off. And I almost feel like these players are wearing synchronized watches. I mean... <laughs> We saw sort of orbital at uh, roughly the same time. We see nukes at almost exactly the same time. What's going on here? I have no idea. But the real question is, what do you think about this, uh, Red? Now, both players, or both teams, excuse me, going for nukes. Both nukes probably going to hit each other at the exact same time. Is this a good idea? And if so, which one do you think is going to come out on this? Ahead on this one. It's definitely a good idea. My only criticism of the whole thing is that I think they should have done it sooner. Yellow, actually, there's no time to talk about this because Yellow now has exploited the umbrella defense. They've spotted where Oh, they found where a where it's building block spot there. that's yeah. safe. Good for them. Boombots gonna Ooh, not really do much. Ripping the Boombots apart. Oh my goodness. Rip. Literally. <laughs> now I was quite curious what they intended to do with those Boombots from the start, and now we'll never know. <laughs> I have so. no idea, but... Now, they did get the Tier 2 factory. I mean, don't get me wrong when I say, you know, ah, oh, that really wasn't much. I mean, that was really big trade because now there are no shellers that will be coming out for a while. A huge yeah. air army, though, here for yellow. I wasn't even a, I wasn't even focused on this because these unicans were everywhere. There's just slammers going everywhere. But this flak, uh, I don't know. That, that seemed very hesitant for them. Yeah. So, you know, getting back to the actual, um, probably the game changer, the nukes, like you said before, Yellows is building much, much faster. They are going to get first launch. White doesn't have an anti nuke ready. This could be absolutely devastating if aimed correctly. And to be honest, it would be very difficult to miss. I mean, they have, they've gotten a picture of the base. They know where everything is. Mm -hmm. They can do tremendous damage. Follow up with the unit cannon and just completely obliterate White. They're I almost, think White they're is actually, in a really I bad position. I think 20% ahead of... Uh... Well, I don't know. They're, it's dropped down to 10. They have both commanders uh, building this, so... Yellow needs to yeah. get some vision on... <laughs> this is the vision, goodness. It's always the vision. Always screaming about the vision. Um, some umbrellas here for uh, Yellow gonna go up. The umbrella's gonna clean up the rest of these Avengers, but... I don't know. These Avengers have turned almost into docks. I mean, they're cheap, they're quick, they don't do much, <laughs> but as long as you're throwing them always at something, they're gonna do something eventually. I mean, we at see... At this point, they're, they're basically a distraction. Yeah, I almost want to think so. I mean, we see, what, uh, three, six, seven, eight orbital factories here for uh, white, and I think if they just turn that no. off and rush the nuke, they're at 45%. If we take a look at yellows, it's at 70%, so... Um, yellow's sort of leaving the nuke aside for one minute, Yellow's making this push finally with the sniper bots that they rapidly built up. You know, at first I think they were maybe for defense, mm -hmm. but now they've realized after they got the unit cannons in, they took a look around, they thought, you know, yeah, we can do this, we can get in there, we can do the damage, and they are doing tremendous damage. They've wiped they out need to all get vision, though. They need, get, they need to get yeah, vision they for these uh, sniper bots, because looking at their range, they do see everything, but they need to focus down what I want to say the important things, the big juicy things, like these... Uh, not these uh, Hulk, not these Hulken husks, but they need to focus down this T3 turrets without walking into range. These sniper bots aren't the healthiest. They do have health, but not that much health. Where they get murdered by pelters, and that's a dead push. This is maybe the biggest effect that the um, you know that white contesting the orbital layer had is that yellow hasn't been able to get a radar out and sort of get a good look around for the sniper bot. Mm -hmm. They probably could have done it with their air force had they really wanted, but regardless, they're gonna check. Snipers will really throw away. They Those blew up the were nuke. A distraction. Did they get the nuke? No, no, they that's deleted huge. it. They deleted oh, it. I think that. So at this point, I think that's pretty much their version of a GG. I think they just realized that they've been beaten. Mm hmm. So. 32 here minutes comes in the beginning. the sun. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Dry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dishonor. <laughs> and and as... there it is. Oh, goodness. Nuclear dawn. Oh, Boom. Commander's going down from that. Oh, and that is tremendous. the wombo combo! Double commander explosion. That was a good day. Yeah. So at this point, here comes the unit cannon to follow up, which is pretty much what we would have expected. Mm -hmm. The question is, though, are they going to accidentally fire it into this umbrella? I mean, it won't make any significant difference, uh, but it's just kind of a point of honor. This umbrella, nope. though, true hero. He's fighting. He's fighting. He might have his uh, his commanders might be dead, but he's going to fight till the end. 
Yeah. And, and, um, which isn't bad. No, but that was... I'm not gonna lie, that was 33 minutes of, I want to say, turtle pain. But seeing these guys manage to bunker down, stay strong, stay calm too, especially through 33 minutes of what was probably the tensest parts of their life, that must have been agitating as all get out. But they stayed strong through you a know, lot of it, and they managed to pull through. When we look back, when we look at this in retrospect, this was an amazing game. I mean, we've covered it all in sort of fits and starts, but we mm -hmm. uh, we did see White sort of seize that early initial advantage, which is a very 1v1 thing to do, I would say. And there's the end of the game. This is I, over. I just got an achievement for an eight-hour casting. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> well done. It says, watch competitive play for eight hours as... <laughs> Mom, get the camera! <laughs> <laughs> Look at uh, these players, they're so sportsman, like, no BM here, no one uh, taking sly snipes at anyone else, like some we could mention, but we won't <laughs> because we're better than that, Urist. Um, <laughs> so, you know, this, this was huge. Let's get some players in here, let's do some interviews, because I think everyone will be interested to know what happened there. I was going to say, um, while we're doing that, that we m apparently host is S ready, because, wow, they're... That did take quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> at least it's on Temple this time, so at least we'll know the crazy spawns and all the sunshine and all that wonderful stuff. But yes, let's get Alpha in here. I know he wanted to get an interview. Let's get um, Nick. I know he wanted to... Um, All right, so let's see. We want Alpha and we want Nick. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. There he is. Gentlemen. Oh, they're not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, it's it's the, it's the warm up one. It's the warm up cast. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, get get ready. Enunciate. You know. Enunciate. You all right. <clears throat> <laughs> but, but don't go too mad. Whoa, no, no, that's too far. That's not <laughs> <laughs> Hold it right there. So that was a huge game. That, oh that my was goodness, massive. that we... was fantastic. I mean, Turtley is all get out, but fantastic um, play coming out of both both sides. I mean, just that early opening. I'm going to save this because I want them to hear themselves. I want them to pat themselves on the back because starting off what would have must have been absolutely detrimental to their just opening thoughts and just like all right we're playing against Elodia we're playing against you know um the other two players <laughs> um <laughs> the other two players <laughs> the BM wow the <laughs> and BM they can, is real they can... Galepsi and uh, Promethean Kelshi Kelsh? yes Kelsh? Kelsh. Kelsh. I'll have to ask him one of these days all right and narcolepsy I mean playing against those you know players that must have just been horrible but Staying, I would must. I mean, their their mindset must have been just an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, we kind of touched on it before. I mean, the, there he oh, is. He has the man himself, Alpha, ready to talk. And, and Nick, Nick B. Hey, guys. hey thanks for up, coming guys? down and congratulations on your win in that thirty-two. Was it thirty-two minutes or thirty-three oh, minutes struggle. game? That yeah. was fantastic. Oh, jeez. That was close. So, you know, guys, talk us through this a little bit. At the start of the game, you know. Me and Gus sort of talked it over a little bit. We said, you know, Pag Elodia. Uh, Pag, not typically the best with team games, but obviously Elodia. Arguably one of, if not the best, 1v1 player in the game. Surrounded mm -hmm. by two players of, you know, like two very competent players, two very, very scary players in their own right. Uh, what, you know, we were looking at, we were thinking, how will this shape up? Because Burning, though, are no slouch. They have their own sort of uh, 3v3 teams or before very team oriented as they can probably overcome this what were your thoughts when you know Elodia and Co <laughs> opened with that rushed T2 you know and you spotted that and you responded because you got a we, good punch on the nose early in the game yeah we kind of panicked when we first saw that T2 oh shit they got T2 before us oh yeah Alpha can give yes, it to <laughs> Yeah, so we so we kind of knew like we were sky and we saw the T two rush, so we knew we had to go T two immediately. We we were already mm -hmm. wanted to go T two, but not that fast, like a couple of minutes later. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, 
yeah. coming off the back of the T2, you know, you had you had that um, terrible commander loss early in the game. You kind of, like I said before, you know, you got that good punch to the face, and it was bleeding a little bit. But you guys did something very interesting. Whereas a lot of other players, perhaps unexperienced in 3v3s and team games, would have sort of taken that loss, and the morale would have fell apart, and there would have been like, you know, this is, you know, this is very bad, this is over, they have this huge advantage. You guys dug in, you were determined to claw your way back into the game. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Like, what what sort of made you make that decision, given that realistically White at that point had this insurmountable advantage, but you stuck in there anyway? Well, I think, uh, like, I didn't didn't felt quite painful that that commander loss, because uh, at hmm. that moment, the game was already, like, with sniper bots and Hawkins, so a commander push or anything was useless. Yeah. You can't you can't push with your commander, so that loss was actually not that that painful it and gave us a lot of intel that. that they wanted to give uh, to do a what is it a bomber snipe. So you didn't really you didn't really take it as much of a like a mental smack on the hands. You kind of just said ah oh, it's a thing and then you just moved on, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, what 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 else could we do with that commander? It's not like we can build uh, uh, what is it like a full base or. Mm -hmm. Or uh, so, what is it? Defend like uh, the base because you got sniper bots that are coming at you. So right, your commander right. is dead anyway if you want to push. Also, yeah, yeah. we had the two commanders in the base also pretty heavily fortified. I believe we had quite a bit of flak. And also, it's good that we actually saw how much air they have early because we put all the more flak in as well. So it felt pretty safe and all that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, you, you did, we saw that bomber snipe sort of building up, or the potential bomber snipe coming, and the black picked it off, you guys sort of sat there, you were very safe, secure, uh, and you actually achieved orbital before they did, and, you know, made quite significant gains in map control with that, but one thing that I've always wondered, and I, re I repeatedly mentioned, why didn't you guys go for an orchid? Why not, why not build the radar? Good question. <laughs> I think I was actually <laughs> and there's your answer. I'm really curious what this secret strategy is. It. Oh, well, there you go. See, Ghost, that's another 10 you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was, honestly, it was a fantastic game. I really enjoyed watching it. It did go on quite a while, but, you know, it, it, there was never really a dull moment. There was always something happening, always, like, some positioning going on, uh, one team making a gain, one team taking a bit of a, you know, taking a bit of a loss and building back up and stuff. And you guys must feel great, you know, having overcome Elodia, Narcolepsy, uh, Promethean, Kelsh, <laughs> Kelshi, like, I would have I would have put them as perhaps favourites for um, for winners of the tournament overall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that match yeah. overall for me was stressful because <laughs> I didn't feel at any point like we had like massive advantage. We felt equal for almost the whole thing. Honestly, it's the nuke the end that won it for us. Otherwise, it would have dragged on even longer. Yeah, I was actually, actually going to say that nuke um, came out quite late. Before, to you. before the uh, the nuke, you guys actually uh, decided to go with the unit cannon. What was your thoughts on that? Because, I mean, uh, we were bringing it up quite a bit. You guys obviously knew that, knew that there were umbrellas. Was it just you were trying to find some sort of chink in the armor, or was it just maybe a, a yellow shot? What were you thinking? I was trying to find a weak spot in the back of their base because I was thinking, oh, maybe they haven't fortified the back of their base as much. Mm -hmm. And I did actually get a few shots off of the back of their base, but... Uh, yeah, well, you got a very good like, snipe yeah. with the, uh, the Tier 2 factory going down, so... I mean, it definitely wasn't mm -hmm. in vain. Yeah, 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 try and pull back their army, harass the eco, do something to them. Yeah, I think it's also like a bit uh, psychological because the, the other team has to respond to that threat because you have to build umbrellas and if they're slammers you have to retreat like a, like a small piece of your army to the back to deal with that, uh, with that danger. Mm -hmm. And that way I was able to probably push a bit more forward in their base because their army is like split half in their base like to the back mm -hmm. and my army is just pushing and pushing in from the front so okay. yeah you, you can slowly pick them off like they have to respond to it anyway mm -hmm. but it That's was a really true. good idea like i was playing uh, i was playing mostly with the sniper bots on forward and nigby was like yeah i'm gonna build a unit cannon i was like what a unit cannon? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah sure why not you know what? it was a yeah, strange sure, decision Maybe a strange decision over an early nuke, but it definitely paid off. I mean, you won the game. No one can argue with the results. But unfortunately, yeah. we are kind of out of time. We need to get on to casting the semi-finals. We can't talk about that game for as long as it took to play, as much as we would like to. <laughs> definitely. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll let you guys get away, get back to the, you know, back to hopefully winning the whole tournament. Oh, Wait, yeah. we can still win the whole tournament? Well, maybe. Uh, we, <laughs> we have no idea. We're... when you cheat. <laughs> we, yeah, just, we just, we just talk about the matches. Yeah. We always oh, okay, say that to yeah, everyone. Sure. We always say, "Oh, we hope you guys win." Yeah. This. I mean, <laughs> it's 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 a market professionalism. Okay, <laughs> we have okay, no real favorites, yeah, sure. but yeah. So well, thanks for well, thank you for your time, guys. Great talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks.